Hello everyone, this is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. With this video, it's a follow-up of the video and the article I did on Amerisource Bergen, where here I'm going to take a closer look at the whole industry. I had several questions asking me why I chose Amerisource over some of these other choices. Here we're going to be looking at Cardinal Health, McKesson, medical distributors, and then the drug chains, CVS and Walgreens because they're all either in similar or related industries. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to keep this very simple. I'm going to cover four companies here. I'm going to look at one attribute. I'm going to look at earnings as a valuation metric. I'm specifically talking about adjusted operating earnings. And what I'm going to do here is illustrate a couple things. I want to make sure that the viewer is clear on what's happening here. This orange line is drawn using a formula. It's a plotting of the company's earnings at a 15 PE ratio. And I think that's, that's critically important. That's a fair value P.E. ratio that represents an earnings yield. So this goes back to 2000. I'm now going to add monthly closing stock prices. In the case of Cardinal Health, this will actually be the most cyclical one that I'm showing. I want you to notice that price ultimately goes where earnings go. It gets disconnected. The, you know, the PEs up here were in the 20s, significantly above the 15 PE, and that was even in the recession. Then we had the Great Recession of 2008, where we had PEs get very low down into the six or seven. We're currently looking at a PE ratio under nine, 8.9. This is a blended PE with a dividend yield of 4.2%. And then I want you to see how quickly they reverted to the mean. Now, what happened here, and I want to just mention this, is the earnings dropped along with stock price. But then once earnings began to grow again, stock price reacted. And we had, you know, minor overvaluation reverting to the mean, undervaluation re reverting to the mean, then overshooting it to the upside. So, you know, it's not uncommon to see higher valuations of what I've got on the screen here, PEs in the 20 range. And then more recently, with all the political talks and open opioid epidemics, lawsuits, etc. We're seeing a lot of these companies, plus they also have some individual issues. Notice that Cardinal Health's earnings were down 7% in 2018 and are expect growth going forward to be very, very low. But the point is, there's no reason not to expect this company to go back to a more normal 15 PE ratio. And as I illustrated in the written part, if it does, that would generate a 36% total annualized rate of return out to the end of fiscal year 2 2021, which by the way, ends in June. If I go to the forecasting calculator, I can even look out a little longer. I want you to notice earnings growth is going to average about 5.4% in this example. Long term, they're saying about 4.6. Those are very similar numbers. I do want you to take a quick look at the summary of the analyst scorecard here. And what I want you to notice is analysts have been reasonably accurate when they've been forecasting this company on the one-year forecast. And they've been pretty good on the two-year forecast as well. If I look at the granularity of the two-year forecast on this particular company, they did miss in 2010, kind of right after the recession, and they did miss in 2018 more recently. But there are reasons for that, which I'm not going to get into right now. Now that I've kind of established how this works, let's go ahead and move on to the other three candidates. The next one is CVS Health, which is actually one of the drugstore chains. Once again, we're looking at a company with you know reasonable levels of debt, triple B rated, trading at a PE of 7.5 with a dividend yield of 3.8%. I want you to notice that this company is actually traded at a premium to the 15 PE ratio. If you put the normal PE on here, it's been averaging about 17.1. Now I'm being a little more conservative and saying if this company does you know revert back to a 15 PE, as I illustrated in the article, you've got an opportunity here to generate 30. 36.9 to be precise, but a 37% total annual return. And as I pointed out, the source of this would be the dividend income. And this company is expected to freeze the dividend for the next couple years because of the major acquisition and merger they just went through. But it's a function of the dividend and the earnings growth and the PE ratio expansion that would generate these future rates of return. That's an astounding rate of return. I'd take 37% all day if I someone could promise it to me. Again, we're 
looking at about four or five percent growth going forward. I want to be clear. I kind of briefly glossed over it with my first example. That's about half of this company's historical growth rate. So we are still looking at growth. If these earnings manifest, I'm simply arguing there's no reason why this stock shouldn't trade at a 15 PE. Now you might argue the 17 PE or you know I'm using 18 here might be a little stretching it, but there's no reason why this won't go back to a normal kind of market multiple 15 PE ratio. Going on to the next medical distributor, I'm going to take a look here at McKesson. And once again, I want you to see that you're looking at a very, very similar picture here. I want you to see that the company's earnings growth, the stock price tracked that earnings growth. And again, you see these constant overvaluations reverting to the mean, undervaluation reverting to the mean, overvaluation reverting to the mean. And now once again, we've got significant undervaluation. Once again, we see a stock that could generate 27% annualized rates of return. If I look at the forecasting data, we have almost a perfect analysis analyst scorecard. This company is expected to grow at about 7% a year. Everything is predicated on these earnings growth. And I want to clarify that. I want to make sure you understand what I'm trying to suggest here. As long as these earnings manifest and don't collapse, there's no reason for me not to believe that these rates of return can't be achieved by this company moving back into a what I would call a fair value alignment. And you've got some really incredible short to intermediate and even longer term rates of return potential as a result. Finally, looking at my next drugstore chain, I'm going to look at Walgreens Boots Alliance. Once again, we see a very excellent analyst scorecard. I'm going to start here with the forecasting graphs, and you can see the rates of return of the company moving back. Here I'm using a 14.7 PE because of the formula, but it's you know roughly a 15 PE. We've got you know really attractive opportunity here. If I go back to using the 15 PE that I mentioned earlier, we've got 33% annualized rates of return. Now, a couple of things that I think really come to play here. I'm going to kind of summarize here. When valuations get out of whack, this is an example of it took many, many years in this example for this company to revert to the mean when it got overvalued coming into the recession of 2001. And, you know, this was dead money for many years. However, if you look at this now, it should be clear that in more recent times, we've had this constant reversion, overvaluation back to undervaluation, back to overvaluation, always moving back into alignment. So the whole thesis here is that if we get back to normal PEs, even though growth is expected to be relatively low for Walgreens Boots Alliance for the next couple of years, you still have the potential to see significant rates of return going going, you know, over the next couple of years. And again, it has a good analyst scorecard. So the whole sector is undervalued right now. It's not really based on the fundamentals they've been delivering, although some of the lower growth has created or added to the anxiety with these companies. The real point is all of these stocks are suffering from a very similar valuation metric. So if you have the uh, courage and are willing to take the risk, I think that risk is mitigated because it's already priced into these examples. They're trading at very low PEs. They have strong dividend yields. Most of them have strong balance sheets. The real question is what's the future for drug pricing and what's the future for drug distribution. And if you can get a handle on that, keeping in mind, as I said in the written part, nothing has happened yet. It's only being talked about. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching.